In today's video, I've been searching for the ultimate astrophotography setup, one that an amateur can create for themselves for less than $1,000. These are just a few examples of what the night sky looks like through my $814 telescope setup. Firstly, I'm going to show you how I got this wonderful telescope and the tweaks I made to it in order to capture these images. And if that doesn't tickle your pickle, then have no fear, because I'll also be going through a number of the most popular alternative telescopes on the market today. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. What we have today is one of my all-time favorite purchases, and I've managed to get this monstrous setup for a mere $689. It includes a 10-inch Celestron Newtonian telescope and a more than capable CG5 go-to telescope mount. With the two of these items together, I can explore the universe in tremendous detail and extreme ease as the mount searches and tracks as many as 40,000 deep sky objects, which is very exciting. And what makes this purchase all the juicier is that it also comes with some accessories that we can sell on ourselves and have even more money to spend on extra gear. Buying used equipment in any hobby can be quite a divisive topic. There are many people that can't imagine purchasing anything without a minimum of a five-year warranty, which is fair enough, telescopes especially are delicate objects and due to their size and the unreliability of the weather, they are effectively luxury items, which means a vast majority of amateur astronomers will inevitably hit a dry spell or wet spell, nope, sounds worse, in which the beauty of our night sky becomes inaccessible due to these buggers. I was going to use another word that begins with B, but I would have to bleep it out. So they list the telescope online for a heavily reduced price, which will get lower and lower as time passes and no fish bite. Right, so let's explore what £550 can get you in the used telescope market. There we go. So that is our entire setup just there. Those are all the accessories that are included with the telescope and the mount itself. So anything that's now inside here is a bonus accessory, which means these are things if I don't want to keep, I can sell them on in order to buy other equipment. The first one being a new remote control. The other things we have inside here are five different lenses, which I'm told are completely brand new, unused. Yeah, okay, so in total we have five eyepieces and two Barlow lenses. These look very nice and should be able to fetch us quite a bit of money. All right. We do also have a polar finoscope, which does cost quite a bit to replace. And then lastly, we have a laser collimator. Now, collimators are important because they tell you if your telescope is properly aligned. After selling all of the eyepieces, I decided to reinvest part of the money into an ultra versatile 8 to 24 mm eyepiece that doesn't require me to swap out any other eyepieces every 5 seconds for an enhanced view. All I have to do is twist the barrel and the universe moves closer. Oh wow, wow! That is the best view I've ever had of the Orion Nebula. Oh, that is special. Maybe it's due to the effect of the lens, but it just feels like you're actually creating a 3D effect when you actually twist the barrel. And because it's the Orion Nebula, it just has this sense of depth to it naturally anyway. So it feels like you are traveling towards it and almost going inside of it. Yeah, it's really cool really cool. I highly recommend getting one of these just for the sole experience essentially being able to travel through space as you twist the barrel and venture towards your target. Yeah that was special the Orion Nebula. I'm going to point at something else now and see if I get the same sort of feeling. Just doing it then to Beetlejuice. That one's very cool because it just gets even redder as you zoom in to the star like it goes from being sort of an orangey colour amongst a different variety of colours and then as you magnify it, it just becomes this dark red colour. That's really cool. Jupiter looks phenomenal as always and we can make out three of its largest moons, with one of them transiting the gas giant. Jupiter is of course the largest planet in our solar system and this particular moon is Ganymede, which also happens to be the largest moon in our solar system. In second place for the planet measuring contest comes Saturn. Its brightest moons are a little harder to make out, so I've played around with the exposure a little so that you can see them. You can clearly identify the Cassini division in Saturn's rings. It's very distinct, but still a testament to your telescope's capabilities if you can make it out. Next up, the moon. Never better to observe than when it's between 25 to 75% illuminated. This allows you to explore many of its craters with terrific levels of contrast. But if you're in search of something a little beyond the reaches of our solar system, perhaps the birthplace of new solar systems, then this is what you can expect to see. 
I'm able to share these live views with you thanks to the help of my Uranus camera. <coughs> my Player One Uranus camera. With the purchase of this camera, the additional eyepiece, and of course the money generated from the sales of these accessories, the total cost of this setup is just 651 quid, or $814. When taking long exposure images with this camera and telescope, this is what you can create. But perhaps you don't have enough time to meddle with all of these wheelings and dealings and you just want to purchase a telescope for under $1,000 and for it to be in pristine condition. If that's the case, then here's an exciting alternative. A new $400 80mm refractor telescope. Any old cheap DSLR camera and a new Skywatcher tracking mount. The three of these are not only ultra portable and easy to set up, but they collectively cost just $27 more than my first setup. The mount does not have a go-to function, but it can track the night sky very well, especially since the refractor telescope has a wider field of view, which enables it to take great photos of the Horsehead Nebula, Orion Nebula, and the Pleiades. There's still room in your budget to tweak it how you see fit. Perhaps you'd be interested in investing more money towards your camera setup, or maybe you want a slightly larger refractor telescope. But if you're in search of the simplest but most powerful telescope setup for under $1,000, then you'd perhaps be best off with what is almost universally considered the best overall telescope within this budget, the Celestron 6SE. It can be purchased brand new, which doesn't leave any room for your camera, but you can always dive a little deeper and see if there are any decent used deals available, perhaps with accessories included that will offset some of the costs. The biggest headache you're going to have at this point is the camera to buy. Should it be a specialized astronomy camera or maybe a multi-purpose DSLR camera? Well, the last setup I'll mention is one of my favorites of all time. And it does not have to worry about adding a camera or go-to tracking mount because it is an all-in-one complete setup that lets you capture some unbelievable images from such a tiny and cheap telescope. I've gone over the Seastar S50 in plenty of detail in previous videos, so if you are interested, then make sure to check them out. The bottom line in this video is essentially that your results will depend on the time and effort you can invest. If you've got time to shop around, you can have this with money to spare. If you're looking for something quick and assured, buy this. And if you're looking for the best of both worlds, get this. In fact, get two of them. Give one of them to your granddad. The goal of these videos is to showcase to viewers what you can see when looking for a telescope. The Seastar S50 has no eyepiece, so that's technically out of the running. But as we all know, what you can see versus what you can image are two entirely different things, which once again proves why the question of what telescope should I get, my budget is blah blah blah, is inherently such a difficult question to give a straightforward answer to. It depends on what you want from your telescope. Do you want to see planets? Do you want to see nebulae? Do you want to see star clusters? And most importantly, do you want to image them so you can share these images with friends and family? Hopefully, this video has provided you with a little bit of insight into what to expect. I live in Bortle 6 guys, which are roughly average in terms of seeing quality which is important to note. If you can think of a better designed telescope rig for under $1,000, then let me and everyone else know in the comments below. This question can actually be quite divisive, so I'm very keen to read what you have to say. Thank you for watching. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical.